on this episode of Slancha. We're heading over to Dartmouth to experience some of the hit local favorites at Nine Locks Brewing Company. We'll find out why these two cousins decided to tackle the craft beer industry in Nova Scotia, how they've become one of the biggest craft brewers in the province, and what plans they've got lined up for the future. Today I'm in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, visiting Nine Locks Brewing Company. While only having been open for just under four years, they're already selling beer faster than they can brew it. To find out how this all got started, I met with one of the co-founders, Sean. I have a, the Rock Bottom Brew Pub a restaurant on Spring Garden Road, and I had that for about eight years before I kind of got tired of people asking all the time uh, if they could uh, buy my product uh, in the liquor stores, and, um, and take it home in cans or in bottles. And uh, eventually I just figured, okay, we got a really good product here. We should uh, expand this brewery into a full production brewery. Danny, who's my business partner and cousin and neighbor, <laughs> um, we would often talk about uh, beer, uh, craft beer, where the beer market is going, where the craft industry is going in Nova Scotia. And uh, we saw a market, and uh, we decided to get into business together and, uh, you know, gr uh, build Nine Locks Brewing Company. Wonderful. So yeah. the idea to, to build the brewery came from other people's love of your beer, which isn't a bad thing. That's great. Yeah, kind of other people's love of our beer, our love of craft beer, uh, the industry. It's a really fun industry to be in. Tell me a bit about um, the name and your, your brand. Where did that come from and, and how you decided on it? Uh, well, you know, we spent a lot of time thinking about uh, what we were going to name the brewery. Uh, we came up with probably a hundred different names. And, uh, and one day I was looking at uh, maps of the area, and we're located right on the Shubenacadie Canal, and um, or just off the Shubenacadie Canal. And uh, I was looking at all the different locks on the Shubenacadie Canal, and I just sort of counted the locks, and I saw that there was nine of them, and I said, "Wow, nine locks! That's a that's kind of a neat name." So I put it out to the group, and everybody thought it was a good name, and yeah, nine locks was born. Nine locks was born. Yeah. And uh, was there any significance for you in naming it after um, the land or location where you guys wanted to make your brewery? Yeah, I think both Danny and I wanted to be in Dartmouth. Uh, we're both from Dartmouth. Uh, you know, we have, uh, we both grew up here. We have a lot of ties to Dartmouth. We both love Dartmouth. I think it was a no-brainer that we wanted to be in Dartmouth. Wonderful. And yeah. you have quite an array of beer at this time. How, how many do you have available? Uh, well, with the seasonals, I think we're up to 13 or 14. Wow. Yeah. Uh, not full time, but you know we have a lot of seasonals that we run year round. And do you have one that's more popular than others? Is there like a fan favorite? The Dirty Blonde is definitely the biggest uh, biggest craft beer sold right now. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, that's is it your favorite as well? Uh, I'm more of an IPA guy, so I like the hoppier beers. I like our IPA and our double IPA, the Fathom. Um, and our pale ale, it's a little, it's still hoppy, but it's not quite as uh, strong as the IPA. You can only drink so many of the IPAs because the <laughs> alcohol level's a bit high. Fair. But, uh, but yeah, the Dirty Blonde is, would be one of my top favorites, yeah. Nice. Yeah. What are your future plans, John? You tell me that you're going to be opening up the, the new site. How yep. big do you guys want to get? Uh, well, I don't know, really. I mean, we just keep on growing and growing and growing. I mean, you know, maybe as big as uh, Molson. <laughs> No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> so, so the sky's the limit for you guys. You want to just keep going. 
Uh, yeah, we had no plans of slowing down. I mean, people keep calling us from all over the country, actually, looking for our beer. So if we can make it and get it to them, we will. Next, I had the chance to chat with the other co-owner, Danny, to get his perspective on this whole adventure. I'm more hands-on day-to-day operations, looking with the staff, hiring, firing, um, dealing with the liquor boards uh, in the three provinces. Tell me how this all got started for you guys. Like, go way back. Way back is... Way back where the way idea... Way back four and a half years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where did this idea bloom from? In the backyard at Sean's place, uh, sitting around. They had a, we had a fire going. We're neighbors. Uh, we're also cousins. And we're sitting around just drinking one, one, af one evening. And it wasn't the afternoon. And uh, <laughs> Sean approached me and said, what do you think about opening your own business? When we opened, we had a running joke in the store. We'd be talking to customers, they would come in, I would be here meeting people, and, and Sean would be as well. The joke was, we'd ask them, so where are you from? Just trying to get a feel of where they are in, in the community, where they're coming from. And the answer, most of the answers was, just down the road or just up the hill. And so it became a bit of a running joke with our staff, saying, where are you from, down the road or up the hill? Oh, down the road. <laughs> So a lot of business this way has been, you know, people driving home and work has been, our support up this way has been great. Plus all over the city now, I mean, we get people driving from other parts of HRM to our brewery now for our special releases. That's exciting. People love what we do. Yeah, yeah. You, must be, you must be very proud. Yeah, I am. It's, uh, and, and Sean is too. We are. I mean, you should say we are. It's uh, um, any business that's successful you should be proud of. Um, but we work hard at it, you know, mm. we put a lot of time in and um, we have great staff and that's what makes our company is our staff. It's not Sean and I, it's our staff. Uh, the people that work in the store are the front, the people coming in. They're representing Nine Locks Brewery. And I'm sure many people thank them for it. <laughs> they do. We have a great social following. We have over 10,000 followers on social wow. media. Um, it's great to see the chatter back and forth between people on social media when we're launching a new beer or, or launching something new. Um, there's great one-offs back and forth with, with our social media followers. What, um, what's been the most um, surprising or inspiring um, post that you guys have had from someone on social media that just kind of was like, wow, I had no idea we had affected somebody in that way. It's from people out of town. Um, it's people from all over HRM saying, uh, I can't get there because the bus isn't running on Saturday. Can you put some away for me? Oh. <laughs> and people are talking back and forth on social media saying, I can't get there. Can you pick me some up? Next up on Sluncha, we find out what makes Nine Locks Brewing such a local favorite. And we get an inside look of the brewery with their head brewmaster. Uh, just looking for a nice beer, something, something different than the typical beer you'd find at the liquor store. I am a local. I come here, I wouldn't say I come here often, but I come here from time to time to pick up some of my favorite beer. Uh, it's just a different tasting thing, you know, something new. Well, I think I have two. It's a little bit seasonal. I think Nine Locks Dirty Blonde would be my go-to during every other month and the cooler months, I suppose. So in Nova Scotia, I guess that could be more like six months. Um, in those months, I tend to like the porter. Nine Locks Brewing Company had all started with a fireside conversation between cousins and their love of beer. To find out more about what made this brewery so unique, I spoke with their marketing and events coordinator, Thomas. So Thomas, tell me a little bit about your role here at Nine Locks. Uh, I do many roles here. Uh, I'm a social media guy right now. I also do all our events and uh, events and marketing and stuff like that. And I just got hired on as a territory manager. So nice. it's my second day uh, <laughs> of sales. So I'm kind of excited about that. So got a broad range of roles here. So nice. but most recently I was doing social media and events. Very cool. And are you from here originally? No, I'm from Alberta. Oh, so wow. came out here for school. 
uh, then just never wanted to leave. How are you liking it so far? Oh, I love it here. Uh, just the atmosphere, the beer, it's great. Just the bar scenes and all my friends are here from school, so it just made sense to stay. So tell me a little bit about working with Nine Locks Brewery. What makes them unique? Uh, we, we make unreal beer. I love it. We're kind of like a tight-knit family. I actually started out working in the store. Then I was out back in the brewery, scrubbing floors, putting cans in boxes, filling kegs. So I worked my way up and they like to hire from within and promote from within, so I've kind of made a career here and I've, I don't ever want to leave, so. Oh, that's wonderful. Do you, uh, do you have a favorite beer? Uh, it really depends on the season and my mood. I always love the Dirty Blonde, uh, watermelon during the summer. I like our darker beers during the winter. We have a vanilla porter, which is my absolute favorite. It's like yeah. Christmas in a can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful. So tell me a bit about your job and social media. How much does, um, that play into uh, the brand and uh, the fans that uh, really love Nine Locks? Uh, social media is a huge part of the business. Uh, when I started, we only had about 2,000 followers, so we were pretty small. But right now, after a year of me doing it, we're at 10,000. So wow. all of our posts get seen by a wide like audience all around Nova Scotia. We have followers in Alberta, Manitoba, uh, Ontario, people that come visit. They'll follow us and they can see what's happening and then now they want to order it online, so we're going to keep trying to do that, brought in our online presence, online store, so social media is a huge part. And so if people want to find you, or, uh, what uh, platforms are you guys available on? We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I also do our social media for our Sandpiper Vodka Soda, which is Sandpiper Vodka Soda, or at Sandpiper Vodka Soda, and for Facebook and Instagram, it's at Nine Locks Brew. Next, I had the chance to have a look behind the scenes at the brewery with the head brewmaster, Jake. So this place is huge! Uh, it, it, when we first moved in, it felt enormous. Yeah. Uh, and it's starting to get kind of claustrophobic as we jam more and more uh, equipment I in. You set up some space. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, standing Yeah, here. right where we're standing yeah. here, and that's, that's about it. That's pretty much it, eh? <laughs> um, yeah, when we began, I guess we're about three and a half years old now. Wow. Uh, we started with these first five tanks and the brew kit. Uh, it wasn't nearly enough, so we've, wow. we've continued to add more and more. Uh, we just got two more tanks. I think we can cram those in over there. <laughs> uh, and, and then we're full up. We'll, we'll see after that. So these are the original five? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. And do they feel like, they feel like kids? Like, are they like, they nestled uh, in? Fermenter Bravo is my favorite. You have a favorite? Yeah, yeah. I didn't think that was allowed. What? No, it is with these guys. Oh, I see but Alpha Bravo Charlie. Do they Box all have we used, They used to have numbers, and now we use the NATO phonetic alphabet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it helps us be less confused about we got number four of a lot of different stuff, so Fair you make letters for some. So these are all fermenters? Uh, yeah, the cone bottom ones are fermenters, and the flat bottom ones are bright tanks. So how many ferment? Are they all in use right now? Uh, that one down there is empty. You gonna fill that? <laughs> Just one. Tomorrow. Yeah. Wow. Now I've heard about this Bohemian raspberry beer. Oh yeah, Where's that's that? in uh, that's in that one over there. That'll be the last batch of the summer, thankfully, uh, because that involves humping 650 pounds of raspberries up to the top of that thing. Yeah, it doesn't like it. it, it it's heavier than it sounds like. Yeah. All right, so we've got all these fermenters. Some over here. Where are your your mash ton and your? Are they over here? Uh, they're all up here. Okay. You see Connor's up there, hey. mashing it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Is that what you can call it, mashing it? Uh, I just called it that this time, but, uh... <laughs> I hope they don't mind. No, Hi, guys. They don't get the choice. <laughs> this is awesome. So how many cans are you guys able to do at any given time? Like, how many a day? Oh, uh, well, it depends how long the day goes. <laughs> uh, you know, our canning line felt like it was enough when we got it in day one. Uh, it's been a lot of 15, 16 hour days this summer. Wow. Uh, it'll do a little bit faster than a case a minute. Wow. Uh, and so we can sell beer a lot faster, we can can it. Uh, wait, how many cases do you sell a minute? 
Uh, well, I, I don't know. I'm like, that. ask the sales team about oh, that. I assumed, I, just, I assumed like, it was yeah, more than that. More than we can. Understood. But try, try not to run out. It's Understood. Tough. It's almost yeah. like you need another canner. Yeah, faster one. And maybe a bigger space. Uh, that'll come. <laughs> uh, but we're a little ways off from that now. Wow. This is awesome. You've got pegs over here. Uh-huh. And then, now what's this up here? You guys cleaning? Uh, yeah, it's a CIP cart. We use that to clean all this stuff. Wow, and then there's another storage area out there. Uh, yeah, we got a couple of warehouses in adjacent buildings. Uh, one's full of our fridge, where we keep beer, uh, and the other one's full of stuff. Just stuff. That we need, beer yeah, stuff. like, yeah, materials. Beer stuff. Awesome. Man, you guys are really moving here. Uh, we're doing our best. Keeping busy. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the product shows. You have how many beers available? Uh, it depends what we ever run out of. <laughs> but we usually have about uh, eight or nine wow. at any given time. Amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Next up on Slancha. It's finally time to sample the beer, and the head brewmaster sets me up with a fabulous tasting of what Nine Locks Brewing Company has to offer. With a wide variety of traditional and not so traditional craft beers to choose from, I find some surprising new favorites. Well, I, I think they're quite unique. Um, they tend to always be fresh. It turns over. I oftentimes fill the growler up at the stations, and um, they just seem to bring a very consistent quality to the offering. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I live over here, and it's uh, convenient for me to get here. That's not to say I wouldn't go if it was somewhere else, but definitely important. We do a lot of entertaining, I think, um, in all seasons, and I really let the beer speak for itself, so I certainly don't oversell it, but I, I think with this beer, the quality speaks for itself. After speaking with the owners and touring the facility, it was finally time to sit down and sample some of the beers at Nine Locks Brewing Company. We're going to drink uh, Dirty Blonde, Pale Ale, Porter, IPA, and Double IPA. Okay, now what, what makes it a double IPA? Uh, it's more IPA than a regular IPA. So, <laughs> I think they started in California in the late 90s. There was a bit of an arms race over who can make the beer with the most hops in it. Fair enough, but that's at that end. I assume we're starting at the other end here with the Dirty Blonde? Uh, yeah, that's our best-selling beer. Um, and it's uh, it, it's not that hoppy. It's made out of wheat, uh, which is a little bit unique. Almost all the beer is made out of barley. Nice. Yeah. And is this one your favorite? Uh, I don't I don't have a favorite. I think this is an appropriate time to drink every different beer. Absolutely. And, you know, I don't, you know, it's like, what's your favorite kid? I know. You, you can't, you can't, even if you had one, you can't say that. You can't say. All right, let me, let me have a look at this one. Oh. Oh, it smells wonderful. So, uh, a little bit bready, a little effervescent. Um, pretty light on the palate, mm -hmm. but the wheat still gives it a bit of fullness to the mouthfeel. But overall, uh, pretty light and refreshing. Mm. There's this beautiful sweetness to it, I find. Not in a, not that it makes it a sweet beer, but it's just, it's just very lovely, mm. light, very refreshing. Mm. I see why that is a popular beer. Yeah. That's great. Now, what is this guy up here? Uh, next, we're gonna drink pale ale. Okay. Uh, our pale ale is particularly pale. <laughs> um, they're called pale ale, is like a bit of a historic term, and it encompasses a pretty wide uh, amount of beer. Back in the day, uh, all the beer was brown, pretty oh, yeah. much. Uh, they didn't really have the technology to make light beers. Mm. It's got kind of like a floral and citrus aroma to it. Okay. Uh, the hops in it are Amarillos and Cascades. They're oh, okay. you know, two of my favorite. Nice. Um, bottoms up. Mmm. See, I always get, like, enveloped in the smell of it first. Yeah, thing. so, yeah, like oranges and geraniums, kind of. Oh. Yeah. Uh, pretty, pretty light on the palate, mm. and uh, you know, it's uh, it's a pretty regular beer for for craft. Mm. Um, you know, if you imagine like a regular domestic beer, but let's put some better hops and more of them in it. That's what you get. 
So pale I think you're right. Like the pales that I'm, I'm used to seeing or being called pales are usually a little darker, maybe have ro more of a roasted malt in them. Yeah, they usually have uh, crystal malt in them, okay. which is uh, when you take malt that already has a bunch of sugar in it and cook it and it crystallizes a bit. This is lovely. I like it. And this is uh, your porter. Uh, yeah, next we'll drink porter. Nice. Uh, dark beer. Mm hmm. Um, very uh, old school and traditional. Mm. Smells like coffee and chocolate and uh, bread crusts. Oh, yeah! I think. Oh my god, it, <laughs> it totally does. And it tastes like uh, coffee and chocolate, maybe a little bit of molasses in the back end of oh, it. Yeah, absolutely so, with the molasses. Uh, the description I've given makes it sound a lot richer than it is, because it's not you know, particularly sweet. Uh, mm. More like coffee than cake. Mm. Yeah. And it's um, it's not. Um, yeah, you're right. When you speak about it, you think it's going to be quite thick yeah. on, in the mouth. A lot of like, but it's it's very light. Yeah, it's, very it's pretty light. Actually. It's the beer I give to people who say they don't like beer because they tend to like coffee or chocolate. No, that's very lovely. Lots of flavor. Really nice. Nice. Yeah. And uh, okay, now we're on to the IPAs. Yeah. So tell me about this guy. Uh, so we got IPA and we got double IPA. Uh, they're both IPAs. Uh, the double IPA is a bit stronger, but really what differentiates them is the sorts of hops we're using. Oh, wow. It's a beautiful smell to it. Mm. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of it's early to get into it, but uh, they, like a good beer should make you thirstier, and I'm mm. having that problem right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, yeah, yeah I just, uh, <laughs> I'll just try it again. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very aromatic, very lovely, light. There's citrus to it. There's a, there's hot content for sure, but it's not mm. like really grapefruity, which is, is good or bad, depending on what you like of an IPA. Yeah, it depends what you, depends it's a, it's what a you very want. nice, um, I would say agreeable IPA. Agreeable. Do you normally find them unagreeable? Um, I do not typically reach for an IPA, yet uh, I appreciate very much the hop content. Yeah, it's just it's a beer for everybody. It's, 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 there's got to be a mood for it. Well, it. It's four out of five better. Four out of five. And, and the double IPA is? Uh, 85. Not out of five. Out of IBUs. Which so is... it's, a, it's a little bit more bitter. It presents a little bit more bitter, too, because uh, the body of the beer is mm. a little bit lighter. Okay. Which you do. You pull back a bit in that, and that allows the hops to pop a little bit more. Okay, interesting. Uh, and we use different sorts of hops in this one's. Uh, ones that present more uh, tropical. Oh, okay. And uh, so like Seville orange and melon and um, papaya, even. Do you get papaya in this? Oh. Yes, there it is. Yeah, wow. So a little bit more bitter, uh, less resin, more oily hopness. And it's kind of like, like a brighter fruit character. It's surprisingly light. Like I'm really, I, I find it, usually a double IPA I find is really like, you know, punch right in the face kind Too of. Too much crystal malt. <laughs> Back that, off, guys. Is that what it is? Uh, well, that's part of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you need any. Mm. No, this is lovely. This is gorgeous. I would drink this any day. Yeah, well, it's for sale. <laughs> so I just go buy well, some. Yeah, you can have some. It's gonna go Let's now. Go. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, it is eight percent. So it's a little, little bit oh. early in the day for. Uh, yes. Get, you don't need many of those. No, I will. Um, but I can stock up for later. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm not here to judge you. Whether you're from up the hill or down the road, making the trip to Nine Locks Brewing Company will be well worth the visit. With a wonderful array of craft beer staples and an ever-rotating number of seasonal selections, these bright, fresh brews are sensational any day of the year. 